This is week nine, lecture one, potential energy and conservation. Uh, so this comes from the first three parts of chapter 12. Uh, we're gonna talk about conservative forces, potential energy and energy conservation. So we're gonna start out with this situation. <clears throat> We have a spring attached to a block that slides without friction across a horizontal surface. Um, the spring is initially compressed here. Um, we'll call this the origin, and that is the where the spring would be if it wasn't compressed or stretched. That's the natural length. Um, so it's initially compressed by some external force. And then after the external force is removed, the spring begins to do work on the block. Um, and the block moves from positive D to zero in this step here. Um, and I want to point out also um, the direction of the motion and the direction of the spring force. So when the spring is compressed, the force is pushing to stretch it back out. Um, and <clears throat> Technically, there's not motion at this step, but um, as soon as the external force is removed, it's going to be moving to the left. So then once it uh, gets to the origin, um, the like going from positive D to the origin, uh, the spring does positive one half KD squared work on the block. Um, and this D is just the distance. So we would also see it as one half KX squared. And it's positive because the spring force and the motion are in the same direction. Um, and this work results in an increase in the kinetic energy of the block because it goes from not moving to moving with a certain velocity. So at this point, the direction of motion is still to the left, but now at the origin, the direction of the spring force is going to switch because at the origin, that is the point where the like sort of length that the spring wants to be at, but the block has velocity, so it's gonna keep going. And then once the spring is starting to be stretched, it's going to pull back. So when it's compressed, it's pushing forward. When it's stretched, it's pulling back. So our direction of the spring force is switching at this stage. So then we have the um, block at a position of negative D um, and the work done to go from the origin to negative D is negative one half KD squared. And that's because, um, I think I have, well, it's because um, the motion is to the left, but the force switch directions. Um, and so they're in opposite directions. So the work done is negative. So at this point is when the um, block uh, temporarily stops moving um, and switches direction of its motion. And the force is still pointing to the right because again, the spring is trying to compress back down because at this point it's being stretched. So this is kind of the turnaround point and then it moves back to the origin um, and in going from uh, negative D to the origin, we end up with positive work done um, because the direction of motion and the direction of the force are the same um, at that point. So again, sorry. Um, it does also switch at this point um, because again, at the origin is when the force goes from either trying to stretch it more or compress it more. So it was trying to compress it more, but then it passes the comfortable point and now it's gonna be trying to um, stretch it more. So then the block goes from the origin back to our starting point of positive D. 
And in doing that, because the direction of the force switched here, um, it's negative work again, one half, negative one half KD squared, um, because the work and the force are in opposite direction. And we can see, we can sum up the work done um, in this process to go from one position all the way back to that same position again. And we see that the work done summed up is zero in this situation. Now we have a ball experiencing gravity. And the ball is launched upward with an initial velocity v naught, uh, giving it an initial kinetic energy of one half mv naught squared. Um, and as the ball rises, the earth is doing work on it until it reaches the maximum height up here h. Um, so let's look. Uh, the blue arrow is the direction of motion, and the green is the direction of the force. So going from the ground to this peak height, um, the force the force and the motion are in opposite directions, giving us a negative work, MGH. Um, and at this point, because we know we learned with projectile motion that at the peak of a projectile trajectory, the um, Y component of the velocity is zero. So that also means that our kinetic energy up here is zero. Um, one second. Yeah, and that's also where uh, the ball stops moving temporarily and switches direction. So the force is still pointing down. At this point, technically for a moment, there's no motion, but then it's gonna switch direction and head down. So again, uh, the motion will be down now, and then the force is also down, so the work to go from the peak back to the ground is positive MGH. So again, to go from the ground up to the top and back to the ground, if we sum up the work done, it's zero again, like we saw with the spring. Now we consider a disc experiencing a friction force. Um, and a feature of friction force is that they act in the opposite direction of the motion, which is true at any point in the motion here. So we have the motion at point A. Um, we're, we're looking at the tangential motion, so it's just, you know, straight up. And the force is down because, again, uh, friction force is in the opposite direction of the motion. At point B over here, the direction of motion is down now and the friction force is opposite up. So going from A to B, we have negative work done by the friction. And then going from B back to A, we still have negative work done by the friction. So this final example here is different than the previous two. In each case, the object ends up back at its starting point. Um, but in the previous two examples of spring force and gravity, the total work done during that motion was zero. In this case, it is not. So what we have happening here um, are conservative and non-conservative forces. So consider a particle experiencing a force as it moves around a closed path and returns to its starting point. If the total work done is zero, then it is a conservative force. Otherwise, it's a non-conservative force. So we found from this example that spring force and gravity are conservative forces, but friction is not. Another way we can tell a conservative force is if the total work done um, is independent of the path taken. So for example, you're bringing a box <clears throat> from the basement to the first floor. And the work done, and then the height from the basement to the first floor is eight. So the work done to go from the basement to the first floor is negative mgh in trip A. But let's say from trip B, instead we want to go from the basement to the second floor and then to the first floor. So in going from the basement to the second floor, the work done in that part of the trip is negative two mgh because the second floor is 
two H in height difference from the basement. And then we go down from the second floor to the first floor, this part of our motion. And that the work done is MGH because the force and the direction are the same, or the force and the motion are in the same direction. So then we want to sum up the work done um, to move the block on its extra long trip. And it ends up with the same work done because we had the same starting point and the same ending point. So it didn't matter that we did all this extra travel um, because the total work done is just dependent on the starting point and the ending point of the motion. So, uh, potential energy is when a conservative force acts between objects in a system. Um, there is energy associated with the configuration of the objects in the system in relation to each other. So for example, with the spring, our um, system is the block and the spring and the compression or stretching of the spring is the change of the configuration. And for gravity, the earth, and the ball are the system and um, the height of the objects or the distance from the earth is the change in configuration and that allows for stored potential energy within the system. Um, yeah, and when work is done by, in a system by a conservative force, um, the configuration of these parts changes and the potential energy changes. So we have work done. Uh, we have a negative change in potential energy, which is just the final minus the initial. Um, and we also have this relationship with work and force. Uh, the, yeah, the force that acts, um, where work is the integral of the force acting with respect to dx. So we can use that to get equations for the potential energy we just found. So starting from the integral, um, first we want to know what f of x is for the spring force, that's negative kx. And then we can set, in, in our example, our initial position was not zero, but for finding just the basic equation, we'll say the initial position was zero. Um, we take the integral of uh, negative kx from zero to x dx, negative kx dx from zero to x, um, lots of x's in there. And we end up with this equation for the spring potential energy. It's one half kx squared. And as a reminder, k is just the spring constant. We can do the same thing for gravitational potential energy, but we're using y now because it's in the y direction. So. <clears throat> um, the equation is just weight because it's a, a force due to gravity. So that's just negative mg. And then we know, because this is true for our situation, that the initial height was zero. Um, but our final height is going to be y instead of zero. Um, and we take the integral. There is no y in this, so it doesn't really do anything. We just end up with uh, the gravitational potential energy is mgy. You might also see this written as mgh, just h being the height. Now, let's take a look at the kinetic and potential energy of our ball in this situation. Um, when the ball is on the ground, either when it's launched or when it's come back down, the potential energy is zero. Um, because the potential energy is mgh or mgy, and y is zero at that point. Um, the velocity at both times here, as you can see, is v naught. So the kinetic energy at the bottom is one half mv naught squared. So we have our potential gravitational potential energy and our kinetic energy. But then at the top, um, this time, the potential energy is mgh, because h is the height. And the kinetic energy is 0. Um, and we know that because at the peak, we learned this in projectile motion, the velocity is 0. 
So, and kinetic energy depends on velocity. So kinetic energy is zero at this. Um, and it's interesting to see that at this initial point and ending point, um, we have minimum potential energy is zero. Um, and at the peak, we have the maximum. And then we have kind of the opposite situation going on with um, kinetic energy. So we've also found these two relationships for change in energy and the work done. Um, we can say that um, the change in kinetic energy also equals the negative change in potential energy. And this brings us to conservation of energy. So in an isolated system where only conservative forces act, total mechanical energy is conserved. And the total mechanical energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential. And this is any potential. It can be spring. It can be uh, gravitational. It can be one we haven't learned about yet. Um, and this means, as we've learned when we've talked about conservation um, in other forms, is that the initial and final mechanical energy of the system are equal. And that also means that the, the sum of the initial kinetic and potential energies are equal to the sum of the final kinetic and potential energies. That does not mean that the initial kinetic energy equals the final kinetic energy, um, but the sum of these are equal to each other so that the total energy in the system is unchanged. So we can look at this um, for the motion of the block on the spring. Uh, we have the block on the spring and a bar chart of the energy for different parts of the motion. So we're starting just, we'll just start here at the top. Um, this is the point where X equals zero, the origin. So there is no potential energy um, because this is the comfortable, that's the length that the spring wants to be. But there is velocity. So we have kinetic energy. And then as we pass that point, um, the spring doesn't want to be this compressed. So there is some potential energy and less kinetic energy because the velocity is slowing down because the spring is fighting back against it. And then we get to our maximum compression. The velocity equals zero here. So we have zero kinetic energy and we have our maximum potential energy. Then we head back. We end up in the middle point where we're balanced in potential and kinetic energy. Back at zero, um, the kinetic energy is at maximum and the potential is at zero. Past zero now, we have another point where we are balanced in potential and kinetic. And then we have our maximum stretch and we have maximum potential energy, but velocity is zero, so zero kinetic energy. And this continues. So this is something to think about with um, kinetic and potential energy is if the energy in the system is conserved, that means that if kinetic energy is changing, potential energy is also changing. Um, and we see that. So here kinetic energy is at its maximum and here it's smaller. That energy doesn't just disappear. It has gone into potential energy. Or from here, where the potential energy is at its maximum, but kinetic energy is zero, um, potential energy is smaller here. And again, that energy didn't just go away. It switched into kinetic energy. It gave some more velocity um, to the block. Okay, that is all for today, or for this lecture, I guess. You could watch them all in one day. <laughs>